Enjoy this free preview from My Outdoor TV. This bit always gets a shiver down my spine. With over 20,000 episodes of the best outdoor shows, we're the home of the adventurous. When you're hunting, weather can change. We know this. The legends. That was the hardest, best talk of my life. My Outdoor TV. For a 30-day free trial, use promo code YT22. Majestic red stacks have, through the ages, impressed dedicated hunters. In this program, we will join three experienced deer hunters and friends from Germany and Austria on their trip around the world, testing hunting skills on the famous red stags of New Zealand, stags that are among the biggest and most impressive found anywhere in the world. For a number of pressure-filled days, they will enjoy friendship, endless hospitality, and rutting red stags in an immense scenery and overwhelming nature. Among these, Franz Albrecht Oettingen Spielberg, Herbert Shearing, and Mr. Kraft are indeed up for some great New Zealand adventures with Duncan Fraser from Cardrona Safaris and his stalker, Nick. The weather on the first morning is a little hazy. Nevertheless, the view is outstanding. The excitement building. Accommodated in one of Cardrona Safari's atmospheric lodges on the mountain, Franz and Herbert prepare themselves for a great day. Hard hunting in hills like these demands a solid meal, which is provided before Duncan introduces the game quality of the area to his friends. We can hear the stag riding from here. Yeah, no, the fair change in weather from a week ago and the stags are really starting to start to roar and make some noise now, which is really good. And we're about two and a half hours east of where we were? Yeah, we're about two and a half hours east and you can see the landscape's a lot different here on the on the east coast compared to where we were hunting in the southern lakes area. Yeah, I mean this compared to the European, I mean this compares to the European type of weather that we get during the rut. Yeah, yeah. So it makes me feel at home. Yeah, no, it's a bit cooler and uh, plenty of bush and a lot of cover for the stags here, so it uh, makes a really nice hunt. And you've got some interesting cast antlers here. We have. We've got a uh, some some cars from a couple of years ago. It's a uh, very old stag, as you can see, with the with the big pedicles, and he started to to drop his lower tines like we discussed a week ago. Quite often, when the stags start getting you know ten and ten years old or around there, they start typically going back, and the first sign will be that they'll drop lower tines. Mm -hmm. And quite often the first one that they'll drop is the second time that we call the bay time. Bay time, okay. Oh. And you can just see as well by the mass of the stag that he is, is a very old stag. He's and very thick. He's very, very he's thick. Very, very, very thick. Very thick and he carries the weight right up, you know, it's yeah. right up through here. It's very heavy. heavy, very heavy. How heavy is this? I would say this, these cast antlers here would have to probably be 13 or 14 kilos. Something like this probably. And okay. this is, you know, two years old, so it's, as you can see, it's, uh, it has been sitting out in the sun and it started to, to dry out a little bit. Very dense. Yeah. Very dense. It's and two years ago, huh? Eh? Yeah, two years ago. Johnny, your your guide, told us that he's seen the stag this year. Yes. And it looks like he's he's also lost this what do you call him the the, the tray tray tine, tray tine. Tine, yeah. I mean he hasn't broken it off but he just hasn't grown. He hasn't it. grown it, yes, yeah, so he's just uh, you can obviously see that he is really starting to get on an age and, and he's starting so he to could drop be his lower tines. Eleven, twelve he years old. He could be eleven or twelve years old now. Yeah. And he told us also that he's a bit little bit longer. Yeah. Yeah, I think he is. He's obviously he hasn't so grown some of the lower tines, very, very but, nice deck, eh? but he's put a lot into his crowns. I mean, it's a dream stag. Yeah, yeah. it's a dream stag. Really amazing. So what's the plan? I mean, we're gonna we we can hear that that most of the roaring is going on down down where the the wooden part of the the estate. Yeah. So quite typically at this time of year when, when the rut starts, the stags will be living in the lower bush. Okay. And during the morning period and, and towards the evening they'll come out of the bush. 
and feed on some, some pasture down below that okay. they come out onto. So we'll, we're going to drive around up onto a high knob and get some elevation and, and do some glassing and see what we can find. Okay. And if we can if we can spot something nice, we'll make a game plan from there and, and do a stalk down through the bush and see if we can go find, find a nice day to do. They're rolling all the day? They will typically roll for quite a bit of the day sometimes. If the sun comes out, they might take a break for a few hours during the middle of the day. Okay. But they're fairly active most of the day at the moment. But I mean, um, we have also seen to, to, uh, in the morning the 17 tars here, about 200 meters. From yeah, some tars just off, just off the, uh, down from the lodge here. And we also saw some fallow deer out over here on the yeah. face running around. So we sleep over the tars. <laughs> yeah, we do. We sleep yeah. over the tars. See, we're sitting at about 2,000 feet above sea level here, mm -hmm. overlooking, we can't quite see it this morning with the fog, but the uh, Pacific Ocean out over here is probably only about 20, kilo 20 kilometres away. Yeah. And look out over all the, all the land down below us. What do you think the chances are that we'll find him? I think we have fairly good chances that we'll be able to find him. Has he been stack. quite stationary in the last Yeah, he has, yeah. Yep. And typically when they start, if they have a wallow or an area at this time during the rut, they start making an area of theirs, they won't shift too far from it. Perfect. I mean, I couldn't be more excited to be honest because I've never, I've never held one of the, a cast antler like this in my hand. And if you say he's got even bigger and more interesting in the last two years, I mean, I don't know what to expect. No, I'm looking it's forward to it. Incredible well. stick. Yeah. It's incredible stick. Really amazing. So let's start us. Yeah. Definitely. Let's, let's go and off. see what we can find. Perfect. Okay. It might be a long day in the field which is why everything that might be necessary is packed in backpacks and into the vehicle. Hunting red stags is somehow the same all over the globe and somehow different everywhere. Getting ready and heading out to hunt in a new area is therefore always exciting. Will the game act in a different way? Will the challenges of the terrain be a killer or quite humane? Will the dream stag be around? or hidden somewhere else. No matter the considerations, new challenges will appear for sure. Exciting moments will arise and different skills will be employed by the hunters during the day. Herbert is the first to be dropped off with his stalker. Hey, I'm Nathan French. I'll be looking after Herbert for the next few days. I'm sure it'll be lots of laughs and lots of fun with him. And hopefully we'll get on some big stags. Hey, have it. <laughs> but let's start with Franz and Duncan. It's still here. Yeah, there's still a couple of stags rolling over here on the edge of the bush. Everything has started to bed up now. Uh, Johnny said that everything was really active last night, yesterday yeah. afternoon and last night. So quite often if they have a big afternoon, big night, running around, they'll have a morning won't be quite as good at hunting. Because they've, they've powered themselves out the night before. Yeah, exactly. They've just been so busy. It'll be a quiet morning, but then maybe this afternoon... Hopefully busy. this afternoon will be really busy again. Johnny mentioned that they were all over here. Yeah, you see there's a lot of big stags around here last night. Last night, yeah. Yeah, yeah but I think that to be able to see them out in the open will give us a better idea also. Of the yeah, these definitely. Things. But I like your, your plan, so we're just going to move through and see what we can find. Maybe do a little bit of roaring yeah, do some more see and some answers. Definitely. Perfect. Mm -hmm. Hunting is unpredictable, and the hunters haven't been stalking for many minutes before a pair of eyes lock on them from above. Now it's all about getting down into the creek, taking a covered stalk around the king of the hill to be sure not to disturb him. Every year, Duncan ensures the shooting of a high number of mature stags in his area. He knows his terrain and the possibility of approaches very well. Stay, beat it. Just 
stop her and then just stop the weird route. Souvenir ID, that's why. Yeah. I think the other one is being boring, it's sitting up behind him somewhere. Then suddenly, they notice a couple of stags right in front of them. Hunting roaring red stags in the southern hemisphere is somehow opposite to Europe, as the rut is going on in March and April. And for the last couple of days, the rut has started in this area. It seems that it has been a hard night for the two combatants. They are settled and do not react in the slightest to the roar Duncan sends out. Red deer were brought to New Zealand by European settlers around the 1850s and 60s. But even though they are not native to the nature of New Zealand, they fit incredibly well into the surroundings. By the sound, it is obvious that something is going on in the bush. But what? Duncan decides that they have to go closer and have a look. It might be the stag they are after. It might be a bit troublesome to enter the home range of a strong stag, but why not give it a try? Nevertheless, the bush is dense, the visibility limited. All odds are in favor of the deer. The hunters have to sneak smoothly under, over, and around one obstacle after the next. Will they succeed? Duncan decides that France has to put the stag out of its misery. It is a sad moment for the German hunter, not something he enjoys, but a task all hunters have to take when necessary. He finds a rest for the rifle, locks the crosshairs on the stag's shoulder, and ends the situation. He was stuck pretty bad, huh? Yeah. Do you think he would have, he would have never got out? Yeah, yeah, that's what cut him out. It's a vine that we call supple jerk. Supplejack. And it's a very strong, and you'll see when we go up and look at it, but they just keep wrapping and keep wrapping. And all of a sudden it gets into a big knot like this, and it's just like a huge rope. 
and there's just no way for them to get out of it once they're caught. And how many stags do you lose every year? Like uh, we probably lose six or seven stags every year like this. I mean, you can see how elastic these vines are. And Duncan and Johnny were telling us that their stags quite often get, uh, get wound up like this. And it looks like, you can see by the way he's been treading all over the place here, that he's been in this for quite some time. I mean, this must be days. And he doesn't look, he looks like he's lost a lot of weight and as you can see here, it really doesn't, there was no chance of, for him to get out and there wasn't even a chance for us to try and cut him out or anything like that. I mean, he was so full of adrenaline. You could see that when I placed a shot on him. And I mean, I can see the exit wound here and, and the entrance, it's, it's really both shoulders and it would have been a lung and heart shot, but he, he took it as if nothing happened because he was so full of adrenaline. He had all these other stags around him roaring. And I bet you it wouldn't have taken long uh, for another stag to come along and, and actually stick him. Um, if that hadn't happened, or if that wouldn't happen, then he would die a slow death. So I think it was the right decision by Duncan to say that we would take him. Age-wise, I can't tell you exactly. Doesn't look like the youngest stag. Got quite a lot of points in the, in the tops. That's how he got so entwined. But it's a shame to lose stags like this, but I guess that's what it's like. You know, this is a wild country wild animals and especially when they're in the rut they get so aggressive they like to um, they like to rub their horns against anything that they can find and for this stag he found the wrong the wrong bush in another valley herbert and nick seem to have better luck below them they have found an abnormal stag with only one antler a stag they are now stalking in this valley too the rut is going on Roaring has been heard all morning. Conditions Nick is going to take advantage of. Just because he could, he could sneak up above his hair already. Okay. The stag is instantly reacting to the call and comes up towards them. Herbert hears the stag coming from the bush and gets ready, but he doesn't have any chance to shoot. He turns around, moves at high speed over the stony ground to get in front of the stag. There, this might be his chance, but it's not easy. <laughs> Left one, you have to. He's healed. You have to. He's healed. Okay. <laughs> okay. <laughs> In rushed situations, wrong decisions can be made, and due to high magnification on the scope, Herbert unfortunately shot the wrong stag. Anyway, the stalker felt like happy hour and instructed the Austrian hunter to shoot the abnormal one too, a stag that had to be taken. Indeed, lots of action and unexpected seconds. Herbert starts his hunt of this year with a tremendous double. Herbert, why don't you just tell us about what just happened this evening? Yeah, it was a really big adventure. We was going in the valley, you know, for to see this stag. We seen him one hour before, yeah. and uh, then he was rolling in the valley, and we go the, on the street, and we know we are about 20 meters from him, and then you stand, I go in the front, and Steve come behind me, and then he was rolling, 
and it was very quickly. I take the rifle, I go in the position, I want to go in the position, and I look behind, Steve is here, and when I look in the front, the stack comes of seven meters, see us, and go back. Okay, and then we was running back 20 meters because we uh, know that it's free here, free area, and then we stand here and then we wait. And it was nothing, nothing, nothing. And after three minutes, this big stack go with this stack running on the on, on, on this side. And I think there are all two two stacks, really really old stacks. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and then I shoot him the first. Yeah. And uh, drop them. Oh yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, he's falling down. Uh, he's stopping. And then I shoot this one and he's falling down. Drop them too. <laughs> <laughs> and it was a question from 15 seconds <laughs> to, to shoot two very old stacks. Really, very old stacks. We have seen it inside, it's perfect. It's an adventure, I never forget that. Perfect. And there's very nice trophies too. Absolutely. Yeah. yeah. Congratulations, so, my friend. It's been a pleasure. Thank you very much. Eh? It was welcome. a nice time. You <laughs> <betcha>. Really. <laughs> really. Perfect. And go. you know, the, uh, I have shot a lot of stacks in Europe and I shot uh, last year also a big stack here. But uh, old stack to bled, I think I never shoot in my life again. <laughs> That's it. Mm -hmm. uh, awesome. It was very nice. Right on. <laughs> so, I think now we can drink a small whiskey. Small? A small, small. one, yeah, a small one. Okay. okay. Thank you. You're welcome. Thank you very much. Right. It might be that Herbert will never get the chance to shoot such a double again, but they aren't the first stags he has shot in this hunting ground. As he mentioned, the year before, he took a big stag. That stag was measured to be the world record at the time. Let's follow that hunt. We're getting close now, so hopefully still beat it up. Uh, we was left mid-morning in the scrub down here. It's been a, a good walk, a couple of hours down, down the mountain to get where he is. So hopefully it all goes well from here on on. Okay, Herbert, we're probably about 300 yards from where the stag's bearded up now, so I think, Give me my jacket, I think we'll put your jacket on, give you something camouflage. You all set? Okay. Very good, let's go. Yeah, so we'll get up around to this uh, couple, okay. two, two ridges around, okay. and then we'll probably have to sneak down so we've got some uh, cover in okay. between us and him and then pop okay. over the ridge. Stand up. 
ready, he's gonna. I think he's gonna walk out. I'd say there's a fair chance he may walk out the bottom side. See right in the middle, see there's two green bushes. If you look square between the middle of them, you can just make his antlers out. so we're going to have to sneak along the ridge and come down to some big rocks down below us here and uh, hopefully wait for him to stand up where we can get a clear shot of him. He's just not quite walking out into the clearing for us at the moment, so hopefully it all works out well. I see, I see, I see. Yeah, get here ready, Steve. Yeah. Just wait. As soon as he comes out, Steve, we're going to take him. Cover it, Tom. There's one bullet. Just watch him. That's a good shot, it's a good shot. Just wait, just wait. That's a good shot, Herbert. Oh boy. Herbert, congratulations. You just took a monster, monster red stag. I think so. Good shot. Perfect. I think so. Well done. Thank you very much. Isn't he a monster? It's a really a monster. <laughs> awesome. I can't believe it. Good work. It's very big. It's very big. Mamma mia. Fantastic. In slow motion, it is easy to see the perfect bullet placement that makes the stag drop immediately, as if his legs were swept away from underneath him. Duncan is not a second in doubt. What a shot. I'm ready. I'm finished. I'm nervous. That was it. Thank you very much. What do you think about that, Herbert? What, do, what are your emotions? Yeah, it's, hey? it's very big. It's very big. <laughs> The hike downhill towards the stag is nerve-wracking, as well as full of excitement for the Austrian hunter and gun manufacturer. Can it really be true, or is it in his imagination? Is the stag as massive as he seemed? How many points will the antlers count? The questions are many. Herbert is speechless, while thoughts are tumbling around in his head. He is enjoying the moment sucking in the atmosphere of victory. It is an unusual feeling to watch the magnificent creature, to touch it, knowing that this monster of a red stag is his. Unbelievable. Over and over again, he turns the antlers a little, retreats backwards, enjoying the view. It is truly unbelievable. Only as Duncan arrives does Herbert come back into this world, realizing the truth of it all. Congratulations, Herbert. It's an absolute tremendous red stag. It's a monster, it's really a monster. And it come any bigger than that. Look at the mass. No, no, I think it's incredible. It's definitely really a waterfall. That is massive. What do you think? It's, it's really monstrous. How many points is he total, Herbert? 
How many points do you have? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, nineteen, twenty. Twenty on that 20, side. Say? Eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, nineteen. Nineteen, okay. Nineteen by twenty. Look at the absolutely tremendous mass on them, Herbert's huge. Look. And around here, it's look. Fantastic. Isn't it? It was fantastic. Again, thank you. Congratulations, Herbert. Fantastic. Not only are stags enormous in New Zealand, but also the nature and hunting areas are huge. To ease up the retrieving of this record red stag, Duncan requires a helicopter. A red stag in this area might easily reach 250 kilo body weight, which by foot would be almost impossible to recover. To watch the stag hanging underneath the helicopter is just another unbelievable experience on this adventure. A few minutes later, the helicopter returns, this time to pick up the hunters. Trophy hunting in the Southern Alps of New Zealand with Cardrona safaris is not a simple thing. The company offers hunters from around the world challenging hunting adventures with a variety of experiences, like flying a helicopter. Shortly after, they are dropped on a mountaintop. Silence descends once again. Again, Herbert is overwhelmed and humbled by the results of this magnificent day. It is time for the trophy shot. And what a shot it will be. In the future, when Herbert rests his eyes on these pictures, he will, as all hunters watching their own trophy shots, be reliving the adventure once again. So we knew the stag was uh, bedded up in some bush this morning. We managed to find them. It took us a while to get it done. We first arrived on the, on the high knob and we could see the tips of his antlers and we set up, we would have been sitting there, I suppose, for half an hour, maybe an hour. And he got up and shifted and sat back down and didn't give us a sh shot at all and uh, sat in the bush. So then we decided to move position and got down onto the rocks and slid down the hill. And he said to me, you could see some bushes moving and about a minute later he come out around the corner and, and presented you a fantastic shot. You made a, yeah, he did, he saw us and, and knew we were there, but you made a fantastic shot on him and he went straight down. It's a uh, absolutely tremendous stag, fantastic example of, of the world-class stags that we shoot here at Cadrona Safaris. Congratulations, Herbert, on a fantastic stag. Years of professional deer management have brought Cadrona Safaris to where it is today offering world-class red stag trophies. New Zealand, the country at the end of the world, has fully deserved fame among trophy hunters for the quality in red stag heads. Struggling through the hills and dense bush combined with the excitement of the hunt, adventures like this are unforgettable. Hunters who have experienced this unique country and spectacular landscapes just once are left with a desire to come back. New Zealand is a true hunter's paradise, which thousands of hunters will agree. After watching this program, I think we all know why.
hope you enjoyed this free preview from My Outdoor TV. To continue watching, start your 30-day free trial when you use promo code YT22.